Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here and I have another tip for you. This one is a couple little tips about using the white balance eyedropper or the eyedropper tool or its official name, the white balance selector. All right, so here's just a couple quick tips about it. Number one is, uh, normally I, I try to work with as few distractions as possible and I keep the left side um, out of the way, the little left side panels. However, there's a reason to leave it open when you're using the eyedropper tool. And that is that little window, that little navigator up in the corner gives you a preview of what it would look like if you were to click your uh, cursor right now. So as you move throughout the image, you'll notice it changes all different colors. So it's giving you a live preview. When you see a color you like, you just click and boom, there you go. So let me ask you a question. If Adobe has the technology to show you a live preview of your white balance in this window, why don't they just show it in this window? Awkward silence, awkward silence. Okay, moving on. All right, so that's tip number one. Tip number two is when it comes to the white balance selector tool, do you know one of the first things people ask me is, is there any way to make this loop thing go away? <laughs> I'll show you that in a second, but I do want to let you know that, uh, so what this is there for is to help, help you to find you to pick a neutral target. You're not trying to pick white. You want ideally a light gray, and in a perfect world, it would be 18% gray, but we don't have to be in a perfect world because if this was a perfect world, I wouldn't have taken this stupid shot of a pair a long, long time ago. It would have been a shot of a Ferrari. Anyway, so um, I do want to tell you this. There is a scale slider for that if you want larger uh a larger grid of colors or a very, very small grid, you can control those. If you never want to see the loop again, just turn that off and then there you're loopless like I stay. And lastly, is there's a tool, there is a feature called auto dismiss. So do you notice that I can keep clicking? And this is what I like about this tool, by the way, is that you can keep clicking and clicking until you find the one you want, except for auto dismiss. As soon as you click once, you notice how my cursor, it jumps back to the eyedropper. If you turn off auto dismiss, then you can keep clicking and say, no, no, that's not it. Oh, that doesn't look good. Whoops, that's not it. How about this over here? And then you can just stop and click and unload it, right? And it's back where it goes. So that's the difference. Auto dismiss means one click and you lose the tool, it goes back. So watch, here's auto dismiss, one click, and the tool returns to its home over here in the basic panel. If you turn off auto dismiss, it allows you to click like mad. All right, so there's a couple little things about our friend, the wonderful white balance selector tool. Hey, uh, if you get a chance, go over to photoshopworld.com and take a look at what we're doing this summer at Photoshop World. We've got a ton of Lightroom classes. In fact, we have so many Lightroom classes that you can go to Photoshop World, spend three solid days there and take nothing but Lightroom classes the entire time from morning till night every single day. Day. Go to photoshopworld.com, sign up now, sign up before June 11th, and you save a hundred bucks. And a hundred bucks is like almost a year of the photographer's bundle. So, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, thanks. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next time.